Cabernet divers. Now, this is going to be an interesting video. Technically, as I said to Kevin earlier, this should be fun. Could be a little bit of excitement involved here, maybe a couple of bangs, maybe some air hissing pretty loudly and so on, but it ought to be fun. Now, I say ought to be because I have to be perfectly frank with you. I've never done this before. But I've, I've thought it through, okay? So it should be safe. I've said that many times through my life. I should show you the scars sometime. But anyway, this ought to be interesting. And it, is, it does prove a point. It does show you something. If it doesn't prove a point, at least it shows you something. So we're going to have some fun, hopefully learn something, and, and answer some questions too. So basically, the whole premise of this particular video is what happens if my regulator hose blows, if it tears, if it breaks? Or what happens if my high-pressure hose breaks? Now, in both cases, the dive is over. Let me tell you that right now. The dive is over. Right? The hose breaks like that. You, you, you signal your buddy if he's real close. If he's not real close, don't bother signaling your buddy. Go to the surface. Now, I will tell you this. You're not out of there instantly. Even if the hose breaks completely, the, 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 you're not out of there, and you can still keep breathing for a while. So it shouldn't be a problem. So here's what we're going to do. I have a regulator here. It's an old regulator, one that isn't terribly important. And it's a good regulator. It works. I have a pressure gauge here, and the pressure gauge works too. We have, let me just open this valve up here. We have almost 3,000 PSI, it's almost a full tank of air in this pressure gauge. And, uh, and it's simple. It's a simple little experiment. I'm going to take these sharp side cutters. I'm going to grab that high pressure hose in this case. I'm going to cut through it. This is simple. Now, don't do this at home. Okay? This is being done by a professional stuntman. <laughs> I've never done this. It should be fun. So that's what I'm going to do. Now, if you've ever played with, with garden hoses, and who hasn't, you know that if with a garden hose, if you don't hang on to the end when you turn it on full, especially if it's a, a nozzle with a, with a little hole in it, we can whip around. It can actually be dangerous. Uh, that's 60 PSI. Typical water pressure in a house is 60 PSI. This is 3,000. Uh, however, I'm not too worried because I have a glove on this end for protection. Okay, and I'm going to wear safety goggles, and there's a first aid kit around the corner, and Kevin is a first aid responder. <laughs> Should be okay. I know, I know a couple of things that I'll show you in a minute that makes me feel pretty confident. It may be noisy, I'm not sure yet, but I feel pretty confident that this is going to be okay. So, first of all, let me get my safety glasses on. And when I'm finished with this, if I'm still here, we are, I'll, I'll, I'll show you a few things. Okay, are you ready, Kevin? Let me get backed up here a little bit. The tank is good and solid. I'm good and solid, and we're going to cut through right over here. This is not easy, by the way. These, these rubber hoses are, these are really, really stiff. So let's see what happens here, okay? So you're underwater, and for some reason, this should never happen, but for some reason, your hose blows. <laughs> oh, jeez. Maybe not. Maybe not. Run through the rubber. Let's get through the nylon. Nylon maybe on the inside. Maybe I need an exacto knife for doing it, Kevin, or something sharp like that. I thought this would be the best. Ooh. Almost through. I'm blow up in my face here. One more. Oh. Okay. So a loud bang, and the air's coming out, and it's coming up pretty quickly. That's it. There's air coming. I can feel the air coming up. Whoop de doo. There's not a big deal. See? Can keep it open. And you hear the air coming out? Okay, I'm going to turn the tank off now, Kevin. Okay. So that wasn't all that bad. There was a loud bang, which I expected, because the reason for the bang is very simple. This is a rubber hose. It expands a little bit when the high pressure air goes in. You know when you turn on your tank valve that the hoses move a little bit. That's because they expand with the pressure. Well, if you have air in a rubber hose expanded, picture a balloon, and you prick the rubber, a balloon, so you do get that pop, and that's what the pop was all about. But why wasn't there 3,000 PSI, 80? Why wasn't there woo, a rush of air? Why didn't the boat go in circles? Why didn't the divers get blown over? There's a reason for that. At one time, that might have happened. I don't know for sure. Before, before uh, modern, more modern regulators. But let me show you why. I'm going to take this high pressure hose off of here now, and we're going to unscrew this. Uh, should take the hose right off, maybe. Unscrew this, and maybe I'll do that, Kevin. Cut right through this. Oh, boy, oh boy. You see, it's tough. 
it's not lucky going to happen. Not by accident, anyway. There we go. A little more. Oh, and these are big uh, side cutters and, and so on. So, oh boy. I can't go any further, Kevin. But if you take a look here, Kevin, look closely, you'll see that this is this hose is probably a half, maybe a bit more than a half inch in diameter. But you see the hole inside is actually quite small. The hole is quite small inside there. And the reason for that is, see it there? The reason for that is you don't need very much, there's no volume involved in making the pressure gauge work. You just need a tiny bit of, a tiny bit of air to, to go up that little hole and pressurize everything and it makes the needle move as well, or your computer if you're using a computer. So you don't need to have a great big hole. This is not like a, a, a drain pipe. But the real reason why the air doesn't come rushing out when your high pressure hose blows is right here right in the high pressure port and the end of the hose now i need you to get in really close here kevin because i need to point this out i'll use this to point it out first of all let's look at the hose you see the end of the hose you would think that the end of the hose would have a great big hole in it but it doesn't it has a it has a very very tiny hole it's called a uh, this is the orifice, actually, and this is called a restricted orifice. This hole is extremely small, so very little air can go through it. It just needs a bit of air to go through to pressurize the hose and make the, the needle move accurately. So very little air can go through that hose anyway. Now, even more recently, look inside. Can you see inside here, Kevin? If I move this a bit, can you see in there? Can you see down inside that port? Again, that ought to be about a quarter inch hole, but it isn't. You can barely see the hole. Again, it's a restricted orifice. So there's a restricted orifice in the regulator, so the high pressure air has difficulty getting out. There's a restricted hole in the fitting, so the high pressure air has difficulty getting in. Right there, slows it down a great deal. Air cannot move through those holes quickly in high volume. And then the hose itself is quite small. So that was exciting, it had a nice pop, and, and you can see that it's really not all that crazy and air doesn't come rushing out so you don't it's 3000 psi you know and it's empty you actually have several minutes now get to the surface but you actually have several minutes okay now i'm going to stop for a minute because what i need to do now is i need to plug up this hole and remove the regulator and we're going to do the same thing for the low pressure hose i just plug that high pressure hose uh, from from the hose that we just cut i plug that and i turn this around so now we have the low pressure hose for the regulator Turn the valve on. We have the low pressure hose now for the regulator, and now I'm going to do the same thing and cut this hose here. And we'll see what happens here. So the same thing. You think I should use an X-Acto knife this time, Kevin? Give it a try. I think I have one right here. Oh, that's a neat tool. Oh, okay. We'll try this this time. I've not done this before, so it just might work better. Okay. So I'll just hold this up in the air like this. My glasses on. My safety glasses on. Don't do this at home. These are professional stuntmen. <laughs> I'm just having fun here, but really, you do have to be careful. I have a lot of fun over the years. You have to be careful. So, okay, here we go. Let's see what happens. So, this is your low pressure hose feeding your regulator, which one would think would be even more serious. Let's see what happens. I have to cut down towards my hand, which I'm not crazy about, but I don't have much choice. I don't think I can cut up very easily. Oh, maybe I can. Let's see what happens, okay? Okay, here we go. Hang on to your seats, everybody. Cut right in half. How's that feel, Kev? Okay. Okay. So again, it wasn't all that bad. Now, the reason for that is, first of all, the pressure from here is 150 PSI. Not 3,000, 150. The pressure that comes out of the first stage is 150. It's called intermediate pressure. It's been reduced. That's 150, which is a lot lower. Secondly, the hose, while it's much bigger, because the volume of air that's required to go through this hose to your mouthpiece is much, much higher. It's quite a bit bigger, but it still is not large. You can see that hole in there might be 3 sixteenths of an inch. Sm much smaller than a garden hose. Garden hoses are half or three quarters of an inch. This is quite a bit smaller. So when you turn the air on full with this, you only have 150 PSI max, 
and you have a relatively small hole coming out. There you go. First time I've done that. I enjoyed it too. Do you want to take the helm off to show the, is there a restrictor in there? There is no restrictor in there. Okay. Well, I can show that there isn't one though. That's a good idea, Kevin. Just, just, just to be consistent, let's be consistent. So now you folks understand what Kevin does for me. Okay. He works the camera and tells me what to do. Okay. We're thinking of getting married. No. Now you see that there's no restrictor. Can you see in that port? And there's the end of the hole. There's no restrictor this time. Compare that to this one. High pressure, high pressure, low pressure. There's no restrictor because you don't want to have a restricted orifice on the hose through which you're trying to breathe. So you're breathing through this hose and then your buddy needs to use your, your safe second and you try to blow up your BC. That's a lot of air. That air has to travel freely. So there's no restriction on low pressure hoses, neither in the hose nor in the port, unlike a high pressure hose. So there you go. I had not done that before and I enjoyed it. And it answered some questions. I forget who it was that asked the comment, what happens to my high pressure hose? Well, now you know. And I know too. I had a pretty good idea, but now I know what happens. And now you understand as well why that happens. Okay. I was going to do something else and I forget what it was, Kevin. You don't remember what else I was going to mention, but I think that's it for now. Hope you enjoyed that. I was, it was kind of fun. Now I have to find the owner of this regulator and tell him the bad news. <laughs> Alec Pierce Scuba, see you again soon, folks. Thanks for watching.